Welcome inside the Covelli Center. Dan Hope joined by Andy Anders for a special edition of press coverage where Ross Bjork was just formally introduced as Ohio State's new athletic director. About a 75 minute long press conference. So there's certainly a lot of different things we could talk about today. I think one that certainly stand out was Ross giving a very full-throated endorsement of Ryan Day. When he was asked about Ryan Day, uh, he predicted that Ryan Day is going to win championships here at Ohio State, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And so while we'll ultimately see what happens with the Ohio State football program over the next year, it certainly doesn't sound like someone who's coming in and thinking about changing football coaches right now. Yeah, specifically saying, you know, I look forward to the national championships. We'll win together is what Ross Bork said. And I, I think that it wasn't just that. I think the general confidence of his demeanor really stood out in this, you know, uh, talked about being so assured in his decisions as an athletic director and his decision-making process. Uh, Reference the old Harry Truman quote, the buck stops here. You know, if there's, if you're ever going to place blame on someone, place blame on him. It's kind of what he said for any decisions that go wrong, but also having the confidence in, in his experience. And he has a lot of experience already as an athletic director, you know, said he's been doing this since he was 37. He's 51 now um, to come in and lead this program. And uh, I think Ted Carter also expressed that in his, press conference. A lot of interesting little tidbits, a lot of broad scope uh, college football and college athletic things come about when you're talking to an athletic director. Um, and hearing some of his thoughts on those topics too was very interesting, you know, saying that he believes the highest resource programs in the NCAA, like Ohio State, need to consolidate power and drive the charge of athletics forward. Obviously, he has a big NIL background. He got into some of that and wanting to listen to athletes more, talked about some revenue sharing topics, a lot of different ins and outs of the big landscape of college athletics that, you know, it's been changing a lot over the last few years, Dan. Yeah, this was our first opportunity to talk to both Ted Carter and Ross Bjork about the future of college athletics, and both of them seem to be on board with the vision that's been put out there by Charlie Baker, where you would separate the biggest programs from everybody else in terms of what they can do financially, being able to share revenue with players. I think both of them recognize that that's the future of college athletics. That's where this thing is headed. And so uh, certainly, you know, Ross Bjork is coming in at a very interesting time in college sports where most likely college sports in five years is going to look a lot different than it does now. It certainly looks different now than it did five years ago. And so Ross Bjork is going to play a very big role in ensuring that Ohio State is ready for that next step. I think, you know, one interesting thing that came up today was the question of whether Ohio State will continue to have 36 varsity sports, because that's something that I've wondered about is when you get into the point of starting to share revenue of athletes, is it really realistic to continue to fund 36 sports when 34 of those sports are largely funded by the football program's revenue? But both Ted Carter and Ross Bjork said, you know, their goal is to continue to have 36 sports here at Ohio State. Now, Ted Carter acknowledged things can always change. Ross Bjork said, acknowledged that football is king here, and we all understand that. But uh, there does still seem to be that vision, that aspiration for Ohio State to continue to fund all of the sports that it currently does. Right, and I think, you know, Ross's experience playing athletics kind of helps in that regard. You know, he understands the importance it has for a young for a young adult that's, you know, growing into that next phase of life, you know. Um, athletes have higher grades in school athletes do a lot of good things in their community it's a great opportunity and you don't want to cut those opportunities if you can afford not to do so um, like you said obviously some issues that arise with when you talk about a revenue sharing model maybe down the line but i think you can cross that bridge when you get there and for now it was very clear today that their intention is to keep all 36 varsity sports i think the other really interesting thing from this was hearing Bjork's answers to some of the tough questions from his past athletic directing experiences, both with the uh, Jimbo Fisher situation, giving him a huge, massive guaranteed contract at Texas A&M, kind of took some responsibility for that maybe, and what, what happened there. And that's where that Harry Truman quote came up really from him, uh, talking about you know anything that goes wrong, blame me. But, um, and then also the Hugh Freeze situation with Ole Miss, um, talking about, you know, he felt that the facts, when they backed Hugh Freeze, um, the facts were good and that he had a history of compliance, but that he had a personal failing, and when that personal failing came to light, they fired him. So that was kind of his answers to, you know, I think the two biggest 
questions, the two biggest knocks on his track record coming into today. Um, and, you know, I, I think he answered them as, as best he could. You know, it was it was tough because they were kicked off the question and answer part of his uh, presser right away. But, uh, yeah, and, and it was interesting to hear his, his thoughts on those situations. Yeah, and he did say he thinks the year, the days of 10-year fully guaranteed contracts for coaches are over. So it doesn't sound like he plans on giving Ryan Day a 10-year fully guaranteed contract. Said his aspiration would be to focus more on incentive-based contracts. At the same time, he acknowledged that these things get driven by the market. And so, you know, ultimately, if Ohio State has a coach it really wants to keep, it, it's going to pay what it needs to pay in order to keep that coach. But uh, it does seem like he's learned lessons from uh, the things that maybe he did incorrectly in the past, and certainly one of those things was giving that contract to Jimbo Fisher. Right, and you know, another thing too, uh, I think one of the biggest strengths that people view Ross Bjork as having coming into this job is his fundraising ability, uh, his ability to grow and really funnel money into an athletics department, uh, raise NIL dollars, do those sorts of things. Uh, he talked about the importance of relationships with donors uh, and how that kind of drives a fundraising effort, uh, really establishing what the vision is for a program and selling donors on that vision and you know I think we've talked about you know there could be a really good synergy that emerges and, and it has emerged even over the last year or two uh, between Ohio State's athletic department and the NIL front uh, I think that you know Ross Bork has a lot of experience running one of the biggest NIL you know um, not collectives but uh, operations. So, operations in uh, in college athletics there at Texas A&M. So I, I think it was also interesting to hear his take on that situation and wanting to get feedback from athletes and understand what their experiences are with NIL. Thank you for watching this episode of Press Coverage. Lots more coverage to come on 11warriors.com as uh, Ohio State's football offseason continues to roll on. Ohio State's basketball, men's basketball, looks to get back on track and we'll have lots more coverage to come from Ross Bjork's introduction as Ohio State's athletic director.